Coming up as the offseason unfolds, we think ahead to the start of the Brooklyn Nets campaign. What are the five-man starting rotations that we want to see? Bench units? Interesting combos? Ben Simmons, Mikhail Bridges, Dennis Smith Jr. Let's mix it up and find out how this team puts together some difficult looks for the opposition. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets. Every single day over there, you're going to find Doug Norrie. He's the owner-operator of DFSR. For all your daily fantasy sports rankings from DraftKings to FanDuel, he's got you covered. I'm Adam Armbrecht, breaking down the New York football giants on the One Giant Podcast with my boy Andy Mack. We thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free on all those great platforms and tell you, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And Doug, where we get started is, I think, what could end up being one of our more expansive discussions around the Brooklyn Nets as we think about the return of Ben Simmons, his insertion into the starting rotation. What are some of the unique and interesting combinations that we, frankly, have never seen a sample size for the Nets with all these new players coming in? Yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is like close to a new team, right? And they, there are some a few carryovers, but even those guys played, you know, somewhat limited minutes with each other last year, less than less than half a season when it was all said and done. And you know, and even some of the holdovers like Harris and Curry and Mills, these guys are gone, and 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 we're looking at a situation where the Nets are coming into this not with a completely clean slate. But getting there, right, in terms of just what the lineups are going to look like. And when that happens, it means you can start speculating on what some of those starting five units are going to be, what some of those four-man combos are going to be, and which ways Jock Vaughn and company sort of hopefully, hopefully experiment this season to try to just figure out things that might work, even if it seems a little off the wall. Because I think the Nets have the latitude this season just to just try weird stuff maybe just because they just, what else are they going to do to some degree? <laughs> right. So like, I, and I hope that they, I hope they, 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 I hope they lean into that because I think they brought in guys this season that it would be a shame if they didn't try some stuff um, just because of some of the guys they brought in. And that's a really good jump. It's a really good jumping off point. We're going to talk Ben Simmons here first. Cause he's the, the player that obviously makes a huge difference if he's coming back healthy for this team, but you're right. When, when you bring in all these new pieces, there'll be nothing more upsetting or disappointing then if Dennis Smith Jr. averages six minutes a night for the first month of the season, you go, I mean, all right. Yeah. You know, now maybe the starting rotation is doing so well that, that it's all good. But when you bring in these new guys, you're hoping to explore something different, especially when we're talking about a lot of players on one year contracts, which means this is a showcase for them to potentially get a longer deal with Brooklyn and have a larger role. When we look then at Ben Simmons, um, it's funny. Go back and listen to the Spencer Dinwiddie uh, conversation that we had to kick off the week, obviously. When you think about Ben Simmons and we think about Mikhail Bridges, Cameron Johnson, Nicholas Claxton, like let's just say that we know those are going to be the starting units. Who's the first guy that you're interested or excited to see him paired with if Spencer Dinwiddie is not a member of that starting rotation potentially? I, I think it's Cam Thomas. I, like I think that like this is the chance, like, just to go back to what we said about just trying new things this year and maybe getting a little weird and, and just having it be a situation where it's just going to be a shame to not see these guys. I think that with those four other guys, Cam's um, weaknesses would be mitigated some degree and his strengths could really be brought out. And I think that that's a situation that we just kind of have to see. And whether it's not, whether it's a starting lineup or not, I don't think there's any world where it's going to be the starting lineup, but um, you know, just in terms of just like, that's okay. Just because it doesn't start doesn't mean you can't see it, right? Sometimes I think people seem to get confused yes. with these ideas. Um, there's lots of different five man combinations you can run over the course of the year, but uh, you know, in just in general, I think for me, and I I don't know if you agree, but Cam, you know, I think we know what some of his downsides are, and we know what he struggles with. But I think a lineup like that would begin to really bring out all the things that he does really, really well. Yeah, you have to look at Cam Thomas and and think 
everything that we talked about with him. And last week we had a great episode discussing him. Go listen to it because it, it's all about what we think the Nets are going to do with him and what they should be doing with him. And I think to your point, what they should be doing with him is looking at Ben Simmons, him being healthy and out there on the court and realizing that along with Mikhail Bridges, along with Cameron Johnson, well, Cam Thomas is going to kind of have to sit and wait, right? You're going to have to just yeah. serve your role, wait for the opportunity to come. And by the way, he serves two functions. One, the three point shooting we talked about really got better this past season and two, the driving at the basket, right? We know that he is an excellent, does an excellent job of taking guys off the dribble and getting in, getting at the rim successfully great at the line as well. So yeah, that easily to me makes the most sense as the number one pairing you'd want to see just because it gives you probably it crystallizes Cam Thomas pretty quickly. If he can't figure it out with another set of players here, another set of circumstances, right? And I think that too, like one one sort of drag on Thomas or Cam over the last couple of years has been, uh, you know, obviously the unwillingness to use them. But then the the times where they did use them was just these kind of break glass in case of emergency situations where they just let him go out and take all the shots. And I don't think that like does him any real service either a, a lot, right? No. Except to just yeah. except to drive the fan base nuts when he doesn't play the next game, even though he just drove, <laughs> even though he just you know scored forty points or whatever. So I think putting him in those situations where you can actually, okay, hey, look, these are four other big, lengthy defenders. You, you're going to get covered a little bit on that end. Um, not, the on-ball creation from that group isn't amazing. Like, Mikhail can do it to some degree, but the other guys aren't going to be able to in terms of, like, taking jump shots and getting to the rim, um, you know, whatever you want to say about Simmons. And, like, he is kind of, like, does have elite scoring in him. And so that would, I would, you know, love, I would just, I, yeah, it, just, it just has to happen. If it doesn't happen, like in the first couple of weeks, I, I, I really would be pretty angry about it. I, like, I just don't, well, you know what? I just would it never would understand a lot of the, yeah, well, we would, we would, I think we would come up against a lot of the things we've talked about with the coaching staff, with the organization, right. Of just boy, when the opportunities have been there to try to figure out this thing, Cam Thomas or otherwise, they always seem a, a hair late, right. A step too short or just too loyal to certain players. And that goes back to last season included, right? Certain guys that either should have been traded or shouldn't have been getting the minutes they were continue to do so. Before we move on to some other guys here, give me another less obvious combination that you'd want to see with Ben Simmons. Because I have my extreme one that I'm more than happy to throw out there just because I like to do things differently when I'm thinking about the Brooklyn Nets. All right. I am going to give you another combination right after this. Because first, we're going to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. Just all you got to do is bet 20 bucks and you're going to land $200 in bonus bets. And here's the key win or lose, FanDuel's got you covered. 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under. You can bet home runs, you can bet strikeouts, total bases. It's all there for you on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use when you win. Get paid instantly. No better place to bet on MLB and really every other sport than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Now let me tease your tease with my own tease as I'll give you actually a combination. Why not? Because I, I was thinking about this the other day and there's actually a couple of different players that maybe I would plug in here. But one that I thought was really interesting, uh, not interesting, but in, I'm intrigued by. If we believe that Ben Simmons and Nicholas Claxton can play or function in some fashion together on the court, understanding what they're going to lose offensively, what they'll be defensively, and then the other combinations you put around them. At some point, I'll include Dorian Finney-Smith in this because I actually think his perimeter shooting and his defensive length to be effective as well as long as he's on this team. Darius Baisley, to me is actually a really good compliment for Ben Simmons. Because if you just go back and think about the idea that whatever his numbers are going to fall to here, he did shoot 38% from deep this past season. Now, as the higher volumes in the previous two years, though, you know, volume gets higher, the percentage gets worse. He came in his rookie year, though, in 2020, knocking down 35% on over two shot attempts from deep. If he can have some element of 33, 34-ish percent from beyond the arc, I find it very fun to see him out there on the court with Ben Simmons. And then, yes, the, the step further is I'd find it very exciting to see all three of those guys with Nicholas Claxton and then put two other, you know, great on-ball effective scores, the best that you have on the team to try to make that happen. 
So you're saying like Simmons, Baisley, Claxton, and like what, like Dinwiddie and Thomas or something like that, or, or McHale yeah, yeah, or probably, yeah, probably, probably makes sense, right? Like, too, yeah, you put McHale in there, any of the guys you want. But ironically, actually, in this combination, you wouldn't, I wouldn't say Cameron Johnson because you need guys that can get downhill, you know, can really get at the basket or quick on the dribble. So McHale and Cam Thomas, maybe you're right there. Spencer Dimity would be another option too, and maybe arguably too. In this type of combination, you can go. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. could be on the court. He's small, but it doesn't matter. You have all this length, right? So you can almost put any other two guys that you think have that ability to get at the basket and be quick creating on ball. Yeah, I do. I do think with Simmons, even though he can play on ball a lot, you still need other, you still do need other creators, right? With him, just because we know that while he yeah. can play on ball, he's limited by spacing. So you have to you have to have at least a little other shot creation in there. I don't I don't think always. It's good enough to just surround Simmons with just shooters. Um, yes, he's been shown right. that he can assist those really well, um, but th- you, you, the guys need to be completely elite shooters, right? And if they're not going to be, like you know JJ Reddicks of the world and stuff like this, like or Joe Harris, right? Like unless th- those kind of guys are just com- completely forty percent plus knockdown guys, the next guy has to be hey if this if the if the spacing's not totally there, they at least need to be able to attack closeouts and stuff like that too, right? Yeah. And so, and I think Baisley kind of fits into that group also, like just enough, right? Just enough to yep. get down. Yep. I, I think Cameron Johnson does too. I think I think we're actually going to see an expansion of his game, uh, getting paid, and just sort of maybe a, not the full set of keys over to him, but that contract mm-hmm. I think is going to help buoy his like sort of like offensive game a little bit. So I, I think I'm okay. I definitely I like all those combinations um, uh, for sure. And there's like and there's lots of ones in here. You know, it's so funny because when we were talking about these combinations, we're like, it's really I mean, every five man lineup can't include Simmons, even though they kind of all do <laughs> because like but they all get Simmons, yeah, but they're all like interesting when you put them in the mix. You're like, well, and that's what a unique again. Skill set. <laughs> it's like the theme of the whole summer, man, is like what Simmons like how you can if when you start drinking the Simmons Kool Aid, and I think we want to for sure like all these lineups become really interesting. I have a couple like non Simmons ones, but what were you going to say? No, no, actually that's, I was, I was going to take it here. Um, So let, let's kick off just pivoting away from a, a Ben Simmons centric lineup, other combinations that we think are interesting. Hit me with one of yours first. Cause I do actually want to talk about that front court and different combinations that can be functional when Ben Simmons is off. Well, I would like to see uh, another uh, sort of pairing. So this doesn't include Simmons, but I would like in terms of like you know, bringing out strengths and weaknesses, this would be a small mm-hmm. lineup, but it would, I think, serve some of the same purposes. And that would be like playing uh, Dennis Smith Jr. and Cam Thomas together, um, like seeing what that happened where, you know, point of attack defense DSJ can make up a little bit what Cam doesn't have there. You you complete a bl- back line with him with those wings. Like you're going to probably you're going to still need Bridges out there for some scoring. You're going to still need Cam Johnson out there. You pro- you need Claxton for rim protection. If you wanted to get super weird, maybe you run like DFS at the 5 and you're just really hoping to sort of get out and transition. It's probably too small and your rebounding would be such a problem. But I I mostly I'm mostly putting it out there to say Dennis Smith Jr. and Cam Thomas, it would be a very small lineup. But we already know Dennis Smith Jr., like he's not a great shooter. Um, There is some Mm -hmm. on-ball facilitation, but he's great at defense. And we know that that's like Tom, one of Thomas's biggest weaknesses is on the defensive end. And if you can put him out there with the point attack, and this is why he Thomas pairs well with Simmons, too. I was just trying to get away from Simmons a little bit. But um, if you're trying to accentuate sort of like strength and weaknesses about two guys, would it be perfect? No. Could you like go for five minutes and see if you could just get enough chaos on defense and like let Thomas cook a little bit more in the offense because you felt okay about it? I think those lineups, and they probably have to have Claxton for sure, but um, I think those lineups, those I wouldn't mind seeing that pairing a little bit because I want to try to get Thomas into situations that are advantageous for him. Yeah, and it's funny too because that would be one of the reasons why, like a Spencer Dinwiddie Cam Thomas lineup, uh, Cam yeah Cam Thomas lineup, like that one is like oh what a butting of heads, like two dudes that late in shot clocks or you know Cam Thomas's situation is he can just drain that clock down and do it all himself. Spencer Dinwiddie is not efficient necessarily in certain key areas of his game. Like it just it feels like whatever would be at the core of a mentality for an NBA player. I think Cam Thomas and Spencer Dinwiddie have a little bit of the same features, like in their in their core essence as a basketball player. Now, Spencer Dinwiddie has evolved as a veteran, and we see him setting the assist rates and stuff. But when they were on the court together, in my mind, I just envisioned like Spencer Dinwiddie being like, 
but not to you, Cam, because I, I know that you're going to maybe do this thing that takes us at our offense, and it actually ends up breaking it down in a lot of ways. So I do like getting small. And the even Dennis, I'll say Dennis Smith Jr., since you mentioned him in the backcourt, I want to see him at any point on the floor with a lot of the key starters. I want to see him on the floor with Cameron Johnson, with Mikhail Bridges, put them in a three-man combination, and then, you know, you want to talk about Dorian Finney-Smith coming in there? That's fine. You want to talk about maybe Royce O'Neal? You want to talk about a versatile player that's still on this roster? Putting him in the backcourt with Dennis Smith Jr. and then building out the, the you know the front court positions, that actually becomes interesting to me too because you keep a little bit more length, a little more muscle, and then just some versatility, which is what you're going to have to have around some of these other players that don't have clear clear across the board skill sets, right? Where they can do a little bit of everything well. Some of these guys are a little more defined. Yeah. And I think what we're going to, you know, I think a lot of our combinations were going to run into offensive problems, right? I think that the Nets, the, the Nets have sort of populated the Nets have their offensive problems as a team. They do. <laughs> like, they, do. So. And I, they do. <laughs> and, um, and for, for the most part, like they have guys who do some things on the court really well, but actually a lot of them have major deficiencies. And that's why sort of why the Nets are in the situation. They are one year contracts. That's why some of these guys are flyers is because it's like, Hey, we do, you do X and Y well, but Z is real, just bad, right? Like they have guys all over the all over the lineup that are like that are like this. Um, and I think if, if it goes in any direction, the trends obviously much more they're much more defensively sound than they are offensively sound. And so mm-hmm. I, this is always going to be the problem. And that's why actually probably people are like, hey, you're like 16 minutes and you haven't even mentioned Lonnie Walker. It's funny about where like Lonnie Walker ends up landing because he's actually not a guy we've talked about a ton up until this point. Um, and probably unfairly, I think, to some degree, mm-hmm. because I think I don't know if it's like not that exciting or if it's just like maybe a little harder to see his fit or, or what it is or his skill set tends to sort of overlap with some of these other guys. But and it's not necessarily like, like so much better in any one area than other guys, but not worse across the board. Like he's a guy. Again, if you want to just throw Simmons back in, like I think he pairs really well with Simmons, like a Simmons, a Ben Simmons, Lonnie Walker. Mikhail Bridges, Thomas, and then like let's go DFS. Like let's get a little more spacing, and we'll get mm-hmm. get rid of Claxton, right? We'll go a little a little heavier on the spacing. You know what I mean? Like I think those situations, and maybe we just need to spend more time on Lonnie Walker in general. But like, is, do you think there's a reason actually we've left him out of some of these combinations, even in previous episodes? Is it like because of what I said before about like sort of like his overall skill set? Is it like sort of harder to picture what the what the fit is, right? Because I think that he's a guy we. We just haven't mentioned as much. Yeah, I think I think he's a guy that when we think when you look at his numbers, three point shooting, right? When you think about him being on ball, again, he's a guy that almost bumps up at doing these things at a high enough level where you you really like it and you can see the impact. And maybe maybe we've both been kind of holding this reserve of well, once we see it with the Brooklyn right. Nets, another guy. Once we see you do it away from high-end, top-level superstars, then we'll believe that it's possible to create it. Coming up here in a second, though, let's talk a little Lonnie Walker, and let's talk about some other potential uh, interesting frontcourt combinations that I would like to see. Okay, so you mentioned there as we're talking about just different combinations, starting lineups, and otherwise. Just time. Anytime during the course of an NBA game that we'd like to see these players on the court together for the Brooklyn Nets. You mentioned Lonnie Walker there. I think if I was looking inside of it and we're trying to find an opportunity, Putting him with Spencer Dinwiddie in a backcourt, I think actually I, I, I would like to see because there's the right combination. There. We believe that Lonnie Walker is going to be a perimeter shooter, at least in some capacity for his role. Okay, that's what Spencer Dinwiddie is not great at, or we're concerned that that's going to continue to drop off after getting away from Luka. So you have that pairing in the backcourt. Now, the interesting thing to me would be push this lineup out and maybe you look at it as a small ball lineup where you're going to keep Mikhail Bridges in there so you make sure you have another player, some length on defense. It, it brings me to, and you can talk about Lonnie with Spencer, but also getting to the front court. If we think about the guys the Nets have, it's Nicholas Claxton, it's Ben Simmons when he's out there, but let's keep him away from it. Baisley, and the other guy that we forget about because he's never had a, a, a big role, and that's Dayron Sharp. Yeah. Like, what is the world where, where Dayron Sharp can live with somebody else in that front court? And I think the only version of it is when you go small and you tell Dayron Sharp, be the guy that Doug defined him as high energy, rebound getter, doesn't have a lot else going on in his game right now. But like, if you make that his sole function and then put a lot of shooters and floor spacing, I'd be interested just to see some of these combinations. This falls into the bag of, I want, 
confirm or deny that the reason why you brought in Darius Baisley is because you don't believe that day on sharp is going to have a big role here. And you're looking to give somebody else those minutes. I actually had one of my lineups was Dinwiddie Walker bridges, Cameron Johnson, Dayron. Um, just to, yeah. like, try to, just to like get to like make up. Cause you're like, Hey, if you have, if you have, um, if you have Dinwiddie and Walker on the court together, you're giving up a decent amount of size there. And you would love to like, just mm-hmm. make sure rebounding, is like locked up. And one thing we know about Dayron is like he's a really good per minute rebounder. He's got other problems, not gonna be able to switch everything. Um, but that's okay. You play a little more drop with those defenses, right? Because like the guys are a little smaller. And so you're like, you know, could you live with that situation a little bit more, knowing that, you know, is he an elite rim protector? No. Is he high energy? Yeah. Like is that lineup that lineup is gonna look a little bit ugly, but at least you have like some backline protection in terms of just overall rebounding, right? And he's good on the offensive boards right. too. So that was my like really kind of off the wall one where it's like, I, I don't want to have, I'm, I'm going to get rid of Simmons. I'm going to get rid of Claxton and let's try to get sharp into something that might work for him. Um, I could see that yeah. one too, because you can put Lonnie Walker on the ball too, and maybe run a little pick and roll with him also with Daron. And I think that really helps him too. Like if he has like another, like two guys that you can maybe run, like just straight up, I mean, not spread pick and roll, but like just run like a two man action with him. I think Walker would be able to do a little bit of that. And so, mm-hmm. I don't know. That was the lineup. I was like, I don't think I'd want to see it for 20 minutes, but five two minutes. Yeah, yeah, we can give it a try. <laughs> right. I think that's fine. And frankly, no, I'll, I'll just I'll add on with the day around piece of it. Um, Dennis Smith Jr. Just and this is mostly about the Nets didn't have a lot of on ball creators last season. When you have more of them, a guy like Dayron, the offensive end of the floor is going to look even worse when you don't have a guy that can, you know, move to help move the ball around, create some pockets of space and let him get at the basket a little bit. He is a big guy. He has some muscle. You want him to be able to go ahead and utilize it. One thing I'll note here, and you can throw out any other combinations you want. Um, just as a reminder to everybody. Spencer Dinwiddie, Mikhail Bridges, and Cameron Johnson on the court together, they play to a 116 offensive, 109 defensive rating. So, you know, we talk about the things that they're going to need to do better or Spencer Dinwiddie and his role. They were successful, even with an under 500 record. And those numbers in a lot of ways are one of the reasons why when we did our episode about the over or under and that, well, the sample size says they're below 500 team. No, I actually think consistency is going to open it up. And then the other players you add into that are going to open it up as well. When you see a defensive rating like 109 for those three guys, who are then what, what are the two guys you add to that that aren't Ben Simmons, that aren't Nicholas Claxton? How do you know? Can you put Baisley out there with those three guys and then add in player X? Like, I'll go, I'll go back to the Dayron thing with that good of a defense. Oh, sorry, not Dayron. I'll go back to just the Baisley piece of it and his perimeter shooting. What's another offensive player you add to it if those three core guys at least have enough length and enough consistency defensively that th- the product works? Right, the plus minus is there for you. You just need to have more firepower, probably on the offensive end. Say the three again, because I caught two and I missed one. What, was, what were the three? Dinwiddie, Dinwiddie, Cameron Johnson, and oh. Mikhail Bridges, like the core three. One sixteen, one oh nine. What do you want to add to that to make it maybe an even more potent on both ends of the floor? Right, what are the two players that you put into that mix? Because I think Baisley would- could be one of them. Yeah, and if I had Baisley, I'd probably like maybe I go like something like Baisley and DFS, and I go small. I think the Nets are going to just have to play small ball, like, like small ball five, yeah. with, small ball five with DFS this year. That's just you're going to see it. Like it'll probably drive fans nuts, but we're just going to see it. Like I just think I'm not sure the trust is there for for Dayron. I don't think they prop. We didn't see anything close to enough from Clowney in summer league to think that he's going to come mm-hmm. in and play right away. Right. So no. like a- after that, I think and the Nets did this last year. They did run these small ball five. They'll, they'll Jock Vaughn will do this, right? I know it drives people nuts, but they, they'll do it. Um, I think you have to just like start thinking that you're gonna see some of these some of these combinations. So like basically just trying to look to you're trying to look to like probably muck it up as much and like switch as much stuff as possible too. Like DFS can do that. Mm-hmm. Maybe Royce to some degree, probably too small. I, I throw Dorian Finney Smith there because at least like the length and girth is there, right? <laughs> yeah. Um and He's they're gonna little lack more those things. Thought. Yeah, yeah. And can spread the floor and can spread the floor a little bit. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, this is an imperfect roster. This is why we're going through this. This these are imperfect permutations because the Nets have an imperfect roster. Like that's just what it is. I I I understand that not everyone loves to hear that, but it's just the it's just the truth. I have one more chaos lineup, but go go ahead. 
Okay, no, no, it's it's why it's why. It, well, first of all, I'm shocked that we like ran across the same lineup there at one point. But it's why we we want to see these different combinations happen. I'll just say before because we'll spend the rest of the show to close out on your chaos lineup because I'm assuming it'll be exciting. Um, Jalen Wilson and anybody is also a combination oh. that I want to see. I, I want to see Jaylen. him on the court at some point, right? Like he's as a rookie, the skill set, the summer league. It's all it, it was all it all looked good, and I want to see it on the court. And in theory a lot of these combinations are nice for what he is, right? He's a little bit bigger, has a little bit of size, a little bit of length, seems to show he's going to be able to do the right things defensively, stay in front of a couple of matchups. So, like, you put him with the right backcourt combination and play him at the three and look to have some other size there, that'll be a fun one just to get a sample of. But let's get to chaos now. Oh, and real quick, just about Jalen Wilson, too. Like, there are worlds where, like, yeah, maybe they're not playing with strict seven-footer true centers in the court. But if you get enough six, eight, six, nine guys out there at once, yeah. you can yep. win along the edges sometimes with some of the overall size. So, yeah, it's not just one seven-foot-two guy standing up near the rim and grabbing every rebound. But it's not like everyone's small across the board. The Nets do have length um, across a lot of this lineup. It's not, again, it's not perfect, but it is there. The, uh, we'll close out on this, I think, but like, yeah, my one chaos lineup that was, uh, would be an absolute, you, you'd have to just rub your eyes out to, to actually watch them on offense, but the defense would be, <laughs> I mean, I think amazing. It would be Dennis Smith, Jr. Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, Ben Simmons, Nick Claxton. Like that group would be complete clamps. And I yeah. don't know if they could score. But like the uh, but the um but the part of them on defense, like DSJ's elite, uh Simmons, we know when he's healthy is elite. We know Mikhail Bridges is elite, Claxton is among the best, you know, rim protectors in basketball, and then Cameron Johnson has just like got enough length and someone's gotta hit some yeah. shots. So like I that was my one where it's like I think the defensive rating, as long as they weren't getting transitioned to death every time, would be fun to watch on defense and man, it'd be like an absolute rock fight on offense. If you win half a quarter, you know, six points to two, that's still a win, man. You take it as a plus every <laughs> single time, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as you're scoring more than the other team. And I, I think that that, you know, the, the one point I'll note I'll pick up on from there is like a, a Dennis Smith Jr. and the, the defensive value. I think what you get excited about, same thing with Ben Simmons, as we know, is last year when Mikhail Bridges and Cameron Johnson came over, it, it was about, hey, these guys are really solid, high-level defensive players in their roles coming over from Phoenix. Now, we saw their defensive ratings take a dip in Brooklyn. But now, thinking about what are the combinations, just to your point, that elevate the defense even more and also alleviate some of that lift so that the Mikhail Bridges and Cameron Johnson can maybe be a little bit more focused and effective offensively, right? So, hey, Ben Simmons, Nicholas Claxton, Dennis Smith Jr., grind it out boys because when we get to the offensive end we're going to be doing all the heavy lifting not similar to some like the kevin durant runs you know he was doing at both ends but where it's like i'm going to do everything every possession you just need to do enough on that other end of the court so um this was fun i'm i, I only have more combinations in my head now we'll have to do another episode down the summer yeah, and um, you, when you said Kevin Durant, I was like, oh, that's another guy that can make every four-man combination look uh, – every other five-man combination look good. They should add him. Good. Yeah, let's add him in. Yeah, he would fit perfectly with this, this roster right now. Okay, we're going to get out of here. Grinding it through the summer, as always. Thanks for kicking us with us over the month of August, September. We're going to be coming at you many, many times a week just talking Brooklyn Nets hoops, one of the few outfits out there that's just going to talk Brooklyn Nets hoops with you all summer. That's just what we do. You can get on with us. It's totally free by just subscribing to YouTube. Subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts, Locked On Nets, all those places. Free for you. Best way to help us. We'll roll through the summer until the season. You know it's August, and these quotes are all themed around this month. And no Nets fan, if you're following Locked On Nets, is thinking this. August depresses me a little. I don't even feel like eating. And when I do eat, that's a sure sign of stagnation. That's Willard Scott, and he doesn't know what it is to follow this podcast. R.I.P. One of the all-time great poets and weathermen. We'll be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, basketball, basketball.